everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, we're just gonna do a fun chit chat, get ready with me video. I have several videos filmed that I'm gonna start editing, but I wanted to put this one up first and just kind of chit chat and let you guys know where I've been and what's been going on and um, kind of talk about my surgery and my grandma passing away. And I'm kind of all over the place in this video, I do apologize, but the cool thing about my community in particular is that you guys, we're like buddies. Like I feel like we're all friends and we just, nothing has to be perfect, right? Sometimes as a content creator, you can kind of get lost in, oh, I need it to be perfect and I need it to have a flow and I need the conversation to have points and da da da. But then I'm like, do you think that way when you're talking to a friend? Like if you're just literally having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a friend, or if you're in a room, like out to dinner with your friends, do you think about that? No. Why am I thinking about that? Like you're my you're my friends. So we're just gonna chit chat. We're just gonna have a conversation. Yeah, I'm just happy to be here. So everything I use in today's video, I will link down in the description box down below, along with products that I've, like I mentioned, they'll all be down in the description box. That's it for the intro. Let's go ahead and jump straight into the video. All right, we are going to do this get ready with me. I am so happy to turn on this camera and just chit chat and fill you guys in on what's been going on and kind of an update on my mental health since we last chatted in my get ready with me. So first up, I have been using these from e.l.f. pretty much nonstop for like the last, I don't know, maybe month and a half. Uh, I picked them up, I think at, where did I get these at? Maybe CVS, Walgreens, something like that. So these are the lip stains from e.l.f. I like how it has a tiny little window so you can kind of see what the colors are. So this one is Power Mauve, and I'm almost out of this one. So this is a lip stain, and what I've been doing is I've been putting it on my lips while I'm getting ready, especially my upper lip. So my upper lip, first of all, I'm going to be getting filler very soon, probably in the next month. It's been a minute since I've done my lips, and I like this color because it lasts a lot longer like throughout the day. This one is Pikes Up, I believe. And this one is a little bit more on the nude side. And it doesn't quite give my lips the color. So that's Pikes Up. And don't get me wrong, like that's cute to like wear as an actual lippy, but I like to use these as an actual stain. Because my lip filler is definitely starting to go down because it's been, gosh, probably two years since I did it. This kind of like gives me some volume and also gives me some color. I let it sit for a minute, probably like 10, 15 minutes, like as I'm doing my makeup. It definitely looks weird having like no makeup on and then these like bright red lips. But while I'm getting ready, you know, once, I, once I'm kind of done with my face, I'll kind of blot off the extra that's kind of sitting there. And um, it will just kind of leave my lips with this pretty, kind of pink look to them. These are so affordable, even though you don't get a lot, like I'm almost out of this one, um, the mauve. I think they're like six or eight dollars, and even though you don't get a lot, it still is a really good formula, so there you go. Let's move on to the face, and I just washed all of my brushes last night. I haven't washed them since before I left and had surgery and stuff, so. so I'm gonna go ahead and apply the Chanel, this is the Le Beige Healthy Glow Foundation. Uh, I have it in the shade BD41. BD51 is my shade for the summer, but BD41 is a good shade for me in the winter. I've also been using the OG, OG? Uh, which I'll be doing a full video on the OG. So the OG brand, I have a few complexion products that I bought from them. And I've actually been using this um, off and on for like the last maybe month, month and a half. The two foundations I am going to be reviewing, Makeup Forever was kind enough to send this to me in PR along with their sponge, which I absolutely love this sponge. I've been using it a lot. Um, but this is their Hydra Glow. It's their HD Hydra Glow, and they sent me two shades in that. And then I went ahead and ordered, where did that bottle go, Tara? It's right in front of my face. <laughs> the Christian Louboutin, what's this called? This is the sublimating fluid foundation and i ordered this in the shade 30w which is golden nude so i will be um reviewing those very soon all right so we're gonna go ahead and apply this first 
The only thing I don't like about the Chanel Le Beige is the lid leaks. Like my other one is a flipping mess. See that? This is BD51. Look at that cap. Like it is just, I don't know why it's so leaky, but it is. It drives me absolutely nuts. Now, what I love about this is that this like blends like really beautiful into the skin. Um, I gotta take these earrings out. Shade actually looks really good. Like it, it blends into my natural skin tone really well. And this one is highly fragranced, like, oh, it's strong. So if you don't like fragrance in your foundations, you will not like this one. Like this is quite strong, but it's such a gorgeous foundation. And I haven't been wearing it much because I didn't have a winter shade. Like BD51 is just way too dark for me right now. And so maybe like the end of the year, I went on the Chanel website and got this shade and I just love it. So I put another pump here and put it on this sponge to like really push it into the skin. This foundation is really forgiving too. So like it's one of those that if you get a little bit heavy handed, like over top of your orange pill or something, you know, like texture and stuff, it doesn't weigh heavy. Like it, it, it really melts into the skin beautifully. So now while I'm putting this on, oh, let's start chatting. I'm kind of actually in pain right now. Um, I have this bra on that's like constricting my chest and oh, it's so uncomfortable, but I've really struggled finding, for those of you that may not know, uh, on, on, on January 15th, I had my old implants taken out and new implants put in. Now, the reason for that, um, which I'm gonna check this really fast. So a trick that I've been doing is I've been using this eight times mirror right here to look at my foundation as I'm applying it and make sure it's not thick in any areas. It is like a game changer, you guys. Game changer. 20 years ago, after I had my daughter, I had a breast lift slash augmentation, okay? At that point, I was half implant, half breast tissue. So my implants, which by the way, I have my implants. They let me keep them, which I was so happy about. Um, but I will be doing a full video on my experience of my surgery for those of you or for those anyone out there that is looking for, you know, what to expect when getting uh, a re-augmentation and like reconstruction because there's a lot that goes into it and there's a lot more than I was expecting. There's a lot of things that I'm really, really glad that I made a few decisions. And so I'll definitely do an, I'll be doing a totally different video, but this is just, you know, to kind of explain where I've been and why I did the surgery. So after my last surgery 20 years ago, my implants were 300 cc's and then I had my real breast tissue in the front in front of the implants. Over the last five years, I've been getting um, my mammograms and it is such a nightmare every time. I mean, <laughs> I always feel so bad for the technician because, and I warn them, I'm like, listen, that 3D imaging machine is gonna be you know, good, but you have no idea what you're in for because my breast tissue is so dead. Last mammogram I had, I've been loving this brush for concealer. This is from BK Beauty and the Nikki Rose collection. Oh, I love it. Anyway, the last mammogram I had, the lady was like, I, and this was in October. She's like, I have been, <laughs> I have been a mammogram technician for like 25 years and I have never seen anybody with dense breast tissue like you. Like, she's like, you are definitely the top of the list. And I'm like, I know, I'm so sorry, because it just is really hard to get those good images, different positions to just make sure that the radiologist can read the images and determine if there's anything in there that's bad. And for the last five years, or since I've been doing mammograms, might be longer, um, I've been told you have got to get rid of that that breast tissue. You're high risk because your breast tissue is so dense that it would go undetected. I have been planning to do this for a while, 
And two years ago, I started looking around. I went to three different plastic surgeons, just trying to find like the best fit for me personally. And I finally found that doctor. He is fabulous. If you're in Utah, Dr. Crofts, he is in Pleasant Grove. He is the absolute best. Not one negative thing to say about him. Like not even one. He exceeded my expectations. But anyway, so I went in two years ago for my consultation and we talked about all the things that we would do. They were gonna take out the old implants and my breast tissue as much as they could, but keeping enough around the nipple to keep that alive. Like you have to have blood supply to, to the nipple or you know it will die. So I had to keep enough for that, but everything else I would just be pretty much implant to get rid of as much tissue as I possibly could. Just a quick side side note. I bought this, this eyebrow laminating kit from Amazon. I'll link it down below. You guys, it works just as good as getting it professionally done. I really liked my brows laminated, but number one, uh, they always dye them too dark. Like they color, cause I have dark hair, they color them really dark. I don't want my brows darker than my hair. <laughs> and sometimes I felt like when I would get it done, they were just black, but I liked the laminating part of it. So then I figured, okay, I'll just get the laminating done and I'll color my own brows. I soon realized why pay somebody to laminate them when I can laminate them myself. So I got on uh, Amazon and bought an eyebrow laminating kit and it works so good. By the way, I've been using the Patrick Ta, what is this called? The Major Brows Defining Pencil and I actually really enjoy it. It's got a thin blade on it and so you can really get like nice micro hair strokes but it's thick enough to where it won't bust and break. Anyway, so I've put off the surgery. I was supposed to have it last January and then I canceled. Um, I just wasn't like mentally prepared to go through that. And you know, the soonest that they could get me in was a year later. <laughs> so this January kind of crept up on me and I really wasn't prepared for it. At the time I was thinking, oh my gosh, this is such bad timing because my grandma is, you know, she was starting to decline um, after the holidays, especially after Christmas. It ended up being perfect timing because I had the surgery on January 15th. My husband and I stayed in a hotel from, so, so the 15th was on a Monday. So we stayed from Monday to Saturday in a hotel. And then my mom came and got me because I could not be around my big Bernie Doodle, okay? He is huge, you guys. He was supposed to be a miniature Bernie Doodle. He is ginormous <laughs> and he's a puppy and so he's rough and he, he is obsessed with me on another level of obsession. Like I don't think I've ever had a, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. My golden retriever absolutely loves me. I'm definitely his favorite person. My Shih Tzu absolutely loves me. I'm her favorite person. But Arlo is like obsessive. <laughs> he takes it to a whole other level. So, um, there was no way in my condition that I could be around him and having him jump on me and, you know, risk causing an issue with the implants or, you know, popping open an incision or something. So the day that I had surgery on the 15th, my mom went ahead and put my grandma in the nursing home just because she just couldn't take care of her uh, anymore at the at her house. And, you know, hospice has been there for months. Like my grandma was supposed to pass away in the fall. She is one tough woman. She was tough, boy. She was so tough. She had cancerous tumors all over her body, in her stomach, um, Her she had a few tumors on her back. Like they were just growing. And her legs, like she was so swollen with water, she could barely walk. She was retaining water so bad. And so she could barely walk, And but she never was on any pain medicine. They only gave her morphine that last week of her life just to help her body kind of relax so that she could pass on. That's how tough she was. Like she was so tough. I was able to go down and see her and be there for her during that la last week of her life. And my mom's had a really hard time because you know, she's been her caregiver all this time and it's hard to be a caregiver. And my uncle who lives with, lived with my grandpa and grandma, he suffers with depression and anxiety. And so 
he was kind of limited as to what he could do as far as helping my mom with my grandma. It was all on my mom. And so when she made the decision to put her in the nursing home, it was a hard decision. But fortunately, my mom literally lives like right down the street from the nursing home. It's like a five minute walk and a minute car ride. Literally, it's that fast. So I told my mom, I'm like, you're so, for so fortunate to live that close. You know, God doesn't make mistakes. And I was down there to be there for that last week. And I am just so happy that I got to say goodbye to my grandma. I know she could hear me, even though she wasn't communicating at that point. I know she could hear me. And I had a great relationship with my grandma. When I was younger, we didn't have the best relationship. She tried to boss me around too much. It was like I had two moms. <laughs> and I hardly could stand being bossed around by my mom, let alone my grandma. <laughs> but um, over like the last like 15 years or so, we have just had a beautiful, loving, warm relationship. And, you know, my love for makeup comes from her. When I was younger, she'd take me to the mall and buy me like expensive like Lancome Clinique and Estee Lauder makeup. And I was the only one out of my friends that had like that expensive makeup. And I'm gonna put on some of my Ray lip gloss. But she taught me to take care of yourself. And if you look good, you can feel your best. If you get up and put makeup on and get dressed, like you'll feel like you can conquer the day. Uh, so my daughter had come down that Friday night. She passed away Saturday and my daughter came down and my daughter was able to see her, which was so, such a blessing. So my mom and her friend had went to see my grandma that morning, so Saturday morning. And this was the first time that like her eyes were open and she was looking all around the room, which she had not done that all week, right? That those final days, she had not opened her eyes. But that last day, the day that she passed, because I think she passed away right around 2.30 in the afternoon, when my mom and her friend Pam were there, she was looking all around the room and, and you could see that she was looking at something, my mom said. And she just kept saying, oh my gosh, her eyes are open. Like, this is wild. So while they were there, um, my mom's friend's brother uh, is a pianist and he plays the most beautiful music on that piano. I mean, he is phenomenal and he has a Spotify account. So my mom says, ooh, I'm gonna take my iPad down to mom's room and maybe play that song, you know, those songs and those hymns and stuff, and maybe it'll just keep her relaxed and like be peaceful, right? So she came back and my mom and I worked for like an hour to get the iPad to turn on, cause it was dead, get the iPad to turn on, get the Spotify account, get it all loaded, and then we were gonna take it down. And we were literally two minutes from leaving my mom's house and the nurse called and said that she had just passed away. And um, so we weren't there and that really bothered my mom. But then looking back on it, it was probably better. And I, I've always known this because I used to work in, um, I need to keep moving or else I'll be here all day. So I used to be a CNA years and years ago. And they always told you that sometimes if a family member is struggling to pass away, they'll ask the family members to kind of step out of the room because oftentimes they can't pass away with everybody around. There's some that do and there's some that don't. So um, I just told my mom, I'm like, she knew that we were on our way down there and she did not want us to see that. We were just not meant to see it. And we have to just be okay with that. I know that my grandpa and her family that has passed on were there to greet her in heaven. And I just, you know, I'm at peace with it. Um, I have no regrets. I loved, d dearly loved her. I'm gonna put some hourglass sunning powder on. Dearly loved her and she lived a good life. She, you know, was such a tough lady and her services were small. She only wanted a graves, graveside service. She didn't really want like a big funeral. She didn't want a big to do, um, but we did just a small, tiny little service. We did a family viewing the morning of so she passed away on a Saturday and we had her services the next Saturday. Her services were really small and just like she would have liked it. And I'm just glad that her suffering is over with and she's now with my grandfather and I'm at peace with that. I have a visitor. Say hi to everybody. He is as big as me. I know, oh, I know. He's got a lot of hair right now <laughs> and he needs a groom. He's going in Monday for that grooming, aren't you? Are you going in on Monday? He's just got so much hair. Are you going in on Monday to get your groom? And get your big old bath? Look at his head. It's as big as mine with all that fur on him. I know. 
Can you say hi to the camera? Look over here. Look over here. What's that? Okay, I got a little sidetracked for a minute with my dog. I don't even know where I was at, but we're gonna move on and we're gonna play with this. So this is the collaboration with Sydney Grace and Kendra Matthews. Mathis, I think it's Matthews. Anyway, but this is the palette called Unveiled. And this one is the light version, I believe. Yes, this is the light, because remember, Cine Grace does light and dark. So the vision behind this is like the perfect bride palette. And I didn't know who Kendra was until Cine Grace collaborated with her. And I started following her on Instagram. And I also started, started following her on TikTok. And she is a really talented makeup artist. And it seems like she does a lot of bridal makeup. So this is like the perfect palette for that. I mean, these tones are really pretty. We're gonna play with it. I haven't even used this palette yet. So we're gonna try it out. I'm gonna first go in with this light shade here on the bottom. I haven't really done a lot of eyeshadow shadow makeup for the last like month um the times that I wore makeup I would just put on a little bit of that ooh, look at that color I would just put on a little bit of that cocoa um from Laura Mercier uh this one the caviar stick that I would just put it like right here and then blend it out and kind of blend it into my crease and then bring it on my lower lash line so I just did a full video on the new skin palette from Kim Kardashian um, so I'll be putting up that video because I think this video is going to go up first. Let's see. I'm going to first go in with this shade and then I'll grab this shade. So I'm going to first start with this and then put this over top. Back to where I was at here. <laughs> I am healing well from my surgery. The first week was really, really rough and he had to do so much pocket work that, oh my gosh, I was in so much pain. Like you guys. I was just not expecting it to be what it was, to be honest with you, because my last surgery that I had 20 years ago, um, we, my husband and I stayed overnight at his friend's house because we lived in my hometown at that time. And I remember going to the mall the next day and walking around. And I think I took pain pills for like two days and I was done. And I was like, gosh, that was simple. But back then I had just dried up um, my milk supply from having my daughter. And for me, that was a very painful experience. So I had a C-section with her and then like two months later, I started drying up my milk supply for surgery. And um, oh my gosh, it was so painful. So I don't know if my pain tolerance was just <laughs> built up already, right? Like, you know, I just don't know if that's what it was or I don't know. But anyway, this time was very painful. <laughs> and I've had a few surgeries over the years of my life. And that one was by far the worst, like as far as pain goes. I think I'm going to take this small brush, which is the BK Beauty 209. And I'm gonna go into this shade and just kind of like carve out the crease a little bit. There we go. And then I'm gonna go back to that brush and then start blending it. Okay, I'm also going to put the same tones on the bottom. So I'm gonna grab this shade, this shade, and then deepen it with that. Okay, then I'm gonna grab this brush from BK Beauty and Nikki Rose. It's like their, her angled brush. And I'm gonna go into that dark gray. It's called Unity. Just kind of like deepen. That outer corner. I'm gonna next grab this brush. This is one of the brushes in the new set that she launched, I don't know, maybe like two months ago, maybe like December, I think, early December. It's the Fundamental Eye Series brushes. Fantastic brushes. She knocked it out of the ballpark with that one. All right, I'm gonna go into this shade first, and then I'll probably grab a little bit of this one. I think I'm gonna grab a little bit of this Happy Wedding Day. It's a really pretty pink, like a light pink, and just go over the crease just to bring some color. So the one thing I was talking about before I, my dog interrupted me, it just came back to me, is my mental health. Okay, I'm gonna go into a little bit of this pink. This pink is so beautiful that I wanna put that on the center 
and just lightly do a light layer of it. Anyway, um, I was really struggling mentally. Like I just, I just kept thinking like, I have so much to be grateful for. And I was having a lot of guilt for feeling down and not really enjoying things that I should be enjoying or things that used to make me happy. I finally just said, you know what, I'm gonna take control and find out what's going on with me. And I have been on hormonal supplements, so my testosterone is really low. And a lot of that is because I had a hysterectomy like seven, eight years ago now. Um, and I was only able to keep one ovary. I had endometriosis um, and it damaged one of my ovaries, but I was able to keep the other. But, um, you know, I was struggling with low testosterone. So I've been on a, I've been, I've been on a testosterone replacement for a while, but I don't know if the dose just wasn't strong enough anymore because you do have to be careful with it because you don't want to do too high of a dose because you don't want to start growing facial hair or you don't want to, I don't want to like trigger my adult acne that I finally have under control. But I just needed that break to say, okay, it's time for Tara to kind of take a break and just focus on my mental health and get that in check. And so that's what I did. And um, I'll be honest with you, it was a long journey, long journey of prayer affirmations in the morning, but I just, I finally was able to get my hormones balanced. And like within two weeks of me taking the right dose of hormones, I felt like a totally different person. I felt happy again. Just, it's so bizarre how hormones truly play such a major role in our daily lives. And if, you're, if your hormones are unbalanced, man, it will throw you into like a depression. It really will. And I will say that that's exactly what I was experiencing. And yes, I had suppressed a lot of pain from my grandfather's death um, because I had to deal with so much family stuff and like a lot of drama um, after he passed. And I think I wasn't able to like fully grieve him. And, and but now I'm finally finding peace with that. Like it takes you a while to, to get to that point where you're happy that your loved ones are in heaven. Like it takes a minute. And so, um, but I'm there, like I feel, so much better. I'm, I am I have such a different like outlook on life. Now coming back to my channel after going through what I did, it was everything I needed to do. By the way, I just wiped off that. See how my lips are still kind of pink? So I just wiped off the lip gloss because I'm gonna put some lip stuff on. But see how my lips are still pink? That's what I love about that lip stain. Anyway, um, but for me, just being able to kind of take a break and focus on my mental health and my family and just get just get right was a huge blessing for me. And now I'm so happy to be back and I like miss um, talking with you guys and reviewing products and just having this platform as that outlet. It's now bringing me that same peace, happiness and joy that it did before. And that was what I was wanting. That was what I was yearning for. So I'm not gonna wear this today, but this has been like one of my favorite combos. Um, this is the Makeup Forever Artist Color Pencils. They sent me a bunch of them, which I love. So this is Endless Cacao, and I've been pairing it with this. In fact, I'm almost out of the gloss of this. See this gloss? I'm almost out of it. See how much I've used of it? So this is from one size and you have the matte lipstick on the one side and the gloss on the other. I have been with, obsessed with this combination. It is so perfect. Um, I have another one that I've been obsessed with, which was what I'm gonna wear with this eye look, but it's the Lip Snatcher from one size and the shade combination is Be About It and I am obsessed. Let me show you what it looks like. And then I put the matte lip on. I just take my finger, kind of like blend it into the lip liner. And then I go over top with this lip gloss. It's, and I've been wearing the lip gloss on its own too. That combination is beautiful. I love, love, love it. Gosh, it's pretty. Okay, so been loving these two together. But today 
I'm going to share with you guys the other thing that I love. <laughs> I don't even wipe this off because it's so pretty, but I'm going to take that exact same color. It's just such a pretty cool tone brown. I actually cannot wait to get a little bit of lip filler back in my lips again. Place where I had my surgery, my breast uh, reaugmentation. Um, he also has a, like he has a plastic surgery office and then he has a aesthetic office where it's like a medical spa where they do lasers, Botox, facials, fillers, all of that. Well, because my implants, I guess, I'm not sure, I think it's the implants, but it gave me enough points to get a lip filler, like a full syringe for free. So yes, I'm waiting to do that when we go to Florida. So I'm gonna go in with this. This is from Valentino. I'll put it down here at the bottom of the screen because I can't remember what these are called. Let me see if I can find out what shade it is. It's called Licoroso. This writing, I have no idea. But anyway, this is for the, it's like a cheek and lip tint. I don't like it on the cheek, but I love it on the lip. So I love this color. It's like a dusty, pinky, like a cool tone pink. I'm gonna let that dry for a minute and then I'm gonna go in with this, which I love this so much. This is from Revlon and it doesn't look like much, but when you put it over top of something, oh my gosh. This is Revlon's super lustrous lipstick in the pearl. So it's got a little bit of that shimmer and the shade is Silver P uh, Silver City Pink, and it's number 405. It's so pretty. Oh, right? It is so pretty. Makeup is on, but I forgot to put a highlighter on. So I had to replace my battery, so I moved the camera back so we weren't so close, and then I realized I didn't put on a highlighter. <laughs> so I'm gonna put on the Divine Rose from Pat McGrath just because it's such a beautiful, like pinky bronze color. Mm, it's so pretty, look at that. Oh, such a beautiful highlighter. I'm actually gonna take a little bit of this on my finger. That might be a little overboard. <laughs> oh shoot. Okay, I might've gotten a little carried away with that highlighter on my lips, but. <laughs> Oh well, whatever. Here's the thing. I like frosty lipstick and a lot of people don't, but me, I love it. So there you go. So this has just been a fun, chatty, kind of get ready with me. Sorry, I've been kind of all over the place. <laughs> I struggle with multitasking, talking, and doing things at the same time is kind of hard for me. So I do apologize for being all over the place, but I have to tell you, I appreciate your guys' support especially over the last several months, just allowing me to kind of just take that break. And then when I come back, you're still here for me. It just, I can't tell you how much it means to me. And I am so, so grateful for this platform. I'm so happy to be back. I'm happy to feel happy again. It's been a minute since I've felt that joy and I'm just beyond grateful and I owe it all to you guys. So thank you guys so much for all of your support and be on the look for reviews coming up. I am so excited to do foundation reviews. It's been a minute, you guys, and I am so excited. Let me know which one you guys would want to see first. Which one are you interested in? Let me know in the comments and I'll probably put a pull up on my community center and possibly on Instagram just to see which one you guys are curious to see first. Anyways, thank you again for hanging out with me in today's video. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day and I will see you guys all in my next video. Love you, bye.